Hello everybody and welcome to this session. I'm glad you're able to join me. Um, my name is Paul Warwick and today I'm going to talk to you about the use of a microblogging tool um, for developing dialogue and oracy skills in the classroom. Uh, I will explain exactly what I mean by all of that in a moment, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minimise myself so that you don't have the pleasure of my face um, as the largest element of the screen. Okay. So let me just do that. Fine. OK, I'm going to talk about using TalkWall for dialogic teaching and learning. TalkWall is the name of the microblogging tool that, um, that has been developed at the University of Oslo and is still being developed at the University of Oslo, and which the Universities of Cambridge and Oslo have collaborated on research uh, around dialogue and oracy that is related to the uh, use of TalkWall in the classroom. So we're going to talk about these things, um, and let me. But let me just just say something about myself quite quickly. I suppose um, I'm a lecturer at the uh, Faculty of Education in Cambridge. I there I primarily work, I guess, with with PGCE students, um, looking at science, uh, looking at dialogue, and looking at oracy. I also uh, am a member of the managing group of Oracy Cambridge, which is led by Neil Mercer. And um, we have a strong association there with Voice 21 because uh, we were involved in the original research with School 21 that led to the development of the Oracy Skills Framework. I'm currently also working with a couple of museums looking at object-based um, learning and the way in which Oracy can be developed through object-based learning. So, that's a little bit about me and probably enough, I would think. OK, uh, for the purposes of this talk, uh, I should introduce the whole team that I've been involved with, um, both across the University of Cambridge and the University of Oslo. And this is a rather nice photograph of us in pre-COVID days um, in Oslo. Uh, sadly, won't be going there for a little while, I don't think. OK. So let me talk to you about um, this. First of all, I'll just say that it's uh, this stems from a research and development project called Digitalised Dialogues Across the Curriculum. And you can find more information about the research elements of that if you want to go to the uh, Faculty of Education website. Uh, just type in Didiac and you'll find us. What we were interested in is de developing knowledge of how students learn, as it says here, in contemporary digitalised schools, and in particular um, with a microblogging platform. Now, you'll be aware of microblogging platforms such as Twitter and in the classroom Padlet. Um, TalkWall is a free browser-based platform, which I will show, show you examples of in a little while. Um, and its intention in its development is that it should be aligned, its use should be aligned with an oracy and dialogue focused pedagogy. So in some ways, uh, the way in which it has been uh, it was been developed as a piece of software has related to the ways in which we have seen um, the a pedagogy related to talk being important in the classroom. If you want some more information about that, um, then by all means go to the Thinking Together site um, on the fact again on the Faculty of Education website, and the address is just there for you to have a look at. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about TalkWall before I show you the browser and show you uh, exactly all the different features of the, of the browser and other, uh, and other parts of the website. Uh, here you can see a teacher who has um, put TalkWall on their screen at the front of their classroom. And what they've done is they've devised a series of walls with questions or statements at the top. And so consequently, here is the wall, here is the statement at the top. And this teacher has it intends this to be a range of stimulus for the discussion elements of the lesson. Now, of course, dialogue and discussion doesn't happen throughout a lesson. Um, and if you're familiar with the work of Mortimer and Scott, um, you'll know that um, they have a conceptualization of 
lessons moving from dialogic phases to more authoritative phases where the teacher is telling the story of the uh, of the subject to more instructional phases and back to more dialogic phases and so consequently talk wall has been devised for those dialogic phases of the lesson to give a focus and uh, and a production content for um, the dialogue that takes place in the classroom and it works rather like this. Um, groups of children get together, as they still can, of course, in COVID bubbles, and they discuss um, the topic un uh, under discussion. They might research, as these children were doing, the topic under discussion, begin to think about what they think about the topic under discussion. And then they'll look at the talk wall questions and statements that the teacher has put up and decide what they want to say about them. Now, unlike standing up in the class and saying a few things and sitting back down and so on, so we get an overview of groups, what the groups can do then is they can uh, put, what the, put their thoughts onto the contribution feed of TalkWall. So it has a contribution feed. It has it allows you to put uh, up to 500 characters in here, but most uh, but that can be set by the teacher. So if you want short responses, you can set for short responses. If you want longer responses, you can set for longer responses. They tick their contribute when they're happy with their contribution. Um, they tick it. Now the important thing here is that dialogue should have taken place before any of these contributions are placed on TalkWall. And so the whole point of TalkWall is to pull together um, the considered discussions of different groups within the class. So they will have had to reason with one another, they will have had to question one another, they would have had to justify what they're saying, they will have to have engaged in a dispute possibly about what they were saying and considered how they're going to agree on what should go up on talk wall. And eventually they write their contributions and they put them up uh, and, and they tick those so that they become part of the contribution feed for the class. And so here you see the contribution feed building in the classroom and all students in all groups can see the contribution from all children which means that they have access to the wider learning community in the class, even though they might be working in groups. And this we think is very, very important because it means that that wider discussion, ideas that you might not have thought of within your group become evident to everybody. And if we wish when in our own groups to use the ideas from other parts of the classroom, then we can, as long as we've got a reason why we think these are the best ideas, why we would want to support these ideas. And so consequently, what's happening here is the teacher is pulling across onto her wall at the front of the classroom different contributions that she wants particularly to discuss in that phase of the lesson. What we have here then is a subsequent discussion by groups. And what these groups are going to do is they're going to pull the contributions um, that they think they most agree with, are most relevant for the purposes of the topic under discussion across to their own group wall. So the teacher has a wall, the students have a wall. And here we have um, people pulling across ideas. We have them editing contributions of those ideas. So if you quite like the idea that someone else has put forward or your own idea, but you'd like to edit it and change it somewhat, you can before putting it on your wall. Um, we have them then choosing a hierarchy of ideas which might be relevant for some activities and might be not relevant for other activities. And what the teacher is then able to do with those is she's able to move between the different groups in the class and look at the different contributions of different groups within the class before um, so that she can see so that she can make comparisons and so on. And again, I'd raise the point that 
what generally happens if you have half a dozen groups in the class is that you hear quite fully from the first group, then you hear reasonably fully from the second group, then you hear in a cursory manner from the second two groups, and you barely hear from the third two groups because your lesson has, has uh, come to an end. And so contribution, uh, therefore, the teacher here is able to stage the way in which all of the group contributions are considered and she can make comparisons um, from the perspective of the of the objectives for the lesson um, when she gets to the towards the end of the lesson. So having considered that a little bit uh, let's just think now about um, Talk Hall itself and look at Talk Hall in a little bit more detail. This is the Talk Hall site um, and as you can see, you can join or you can log in. Um, and when you log in, um, you would log in as a teacher. Um, when you log in, you are able to log in through a school Google account, um, which is uh, what I do, uh, generally speaking. There are a range of different options, some of them Norwegian options only, and but the Google account, um, Google, Google corporate account idea is the, probably the best one. Um, before we do that, the, before we do that and have a look at what TalkWall looks like and how the teacher manipulates its use, um, don't dismiss this part of the website because what we've done with the website is we have um, created different sections so that you can have a look at CPD material for developing the use of dialogue with digital technology. And so, uh, for example, here we have different sections on education and technology, dialogue in whole class interactions and dialogue in student groups. So if you want to know more about dialogue, dialogue in student groups, you can go to um, this section and oddly we've chosen grey for links. Um, I really don't know why, but we have. And so consequently, you can go to these, open up these, and you will find all sorts of materials um, to support the work that you're doing as a team of staff um, in developing your use of exploratory talk or your use of oracy skills within the classroom. And so this section is looking at dialogue in student groups. Um, and within there, we've got um, some materials from Neil Mercer discussing the characteristics of three different types of group. We've got why it's important uh, to think about the character of talking student groups. We've got some materials about lessons for preparing students for exploratory talk. Um, we've got some background material on finding out about talking together. And we've got some talking points, activities to do um, to get people going. And you'll find that as you go through this website, um, the different sections of the website gives you different materials to support your work together as a staff in developing this area, um, regardless of whether you then go on to use TalkWall in the classroom. Um, so let me just go back. The part of the website that you log in by um, is at the very front, and that's why people miss um, the material that, that, um, that I've just been talking about. And so I will log in um, because I'm going to show you, and you've got various forms of authentication here, as you can see, and I will choose my corporate account. And I will find that I've been doing some work with my uh, with my teacher trainees at the beginning of their course on what makes a great teacher. Um, and you will see up here. So this is a wall that I have already created. But when you first come here, you will simply get a blank wall. What you then do is you click on create and begin to create a wall. Now I'm going to use the wall I've already created to point out um, particular features of talk wall um, so that you have an idea of, of how it works. So let me call this one up. So it'll be interesting to see what makes a great teacher, won't it really? Okay, so when you create a wall, it automatically gives you a pin number. And when students join, they have to put in two things. 
they have to put in the name of their group. And so it's usual, uh, or certainly we found it to be most productive for the for a group of three to work with one device, one laptop, one iPad, whatever it might happen to be. And the students decide on a group name and they join by putting in the group name and their pin from the first page of the talk wall website. So they're in. What they then do as a result of what you have done, and this was a very simple task, I simply wrote, what makes a great, great teacher? And that was the talking point for um, this particular group of trainee teachers. And what they did was they put in their contributions uh, in the way that I've just described, and they kept adding their contributions, um, and you can see the names of the different groups here, um, until uh, this was the end of this dialogic phase of, of the session. What I did then was I went to this part of the website um, where I was able to click on the different groups. And that allowed me access to the different groups that, that were in the, in the uh, class. And so let's have a look at uh, Smiley Singers. And what I can do now is I can select one group and I can look, I gave them a diamond nine activity, what's the, from what's the most important to the least important of nine contributions that you pick and choose. And you see, first of all, that they've picked a number of different contributions from themselves, but also from other groups, things that they thought were better ideas than the ones that they had put up themselves. They dragged these across, and then their task was to put them into a hierarchy from most important. So this group thought that showing leadership and organisation was the most important thing. This group showed compassion and empathy. This group, and you'll see as I switch to it, that where they have common ideas, um, these are illustrated by, by the, these ideas moving around the screen. Uh, this group thought that the most important thing was good subject knowledge. This group thought a willingness to understand each individual and so on. And so essentially, you have, um, you have a wall into which you can look at, onto which you can look at individual contributions, if you wish. So I'll go back to individual contributions or group contributions, if you wish, um, as a teacher and discuss those contributions with the whole class at the end of the at the end of the activity. If you want to add another uh, another wall, um, then you can add another wall. And so this allows you to add a task. And so what you can do is you can generate a range of tasks for use at different stages in the in the lesson, or you can use it for different stages in different lessons because once you've created a wall, it becomes your wall. Every time you log in, it's there unless you delete it. So you can go back over things with, with uh, your class. You can come, you can consider ideas. You can look back at what they were thinking at the beginning of a topic and what they're now thinking at the end of a topic. So you can edit tasks. You can also create filters. Um, and so you can filter by contribution, but you can get the uh, you can get the class to add hashtags for particular concepts um, so that and then you can filter by those hashtags rather than filtering by groups um, or you can filter by properties. And so there are a range of different ways of organizing these uh, of organizing these filters. So that's broadly talk wall. Uh, I think the main thing that you need to do if you think mm, this, this, this looks like it has some promise is to think, is to play with it a little bit. Um, use your family. Uh, it's, as I say, it's free and browser based and use your family as surrogate classes um, to try out some of the features um, until you feel that, that you want to try it out with your own class. Um, you can provide different backgrounds so it can be divided in different ways when you create a new task, etc, um, etc. Et and you need to play with those ideas, as with all IT really, before, before you get to use it. The most important thing, the most important thing 
is that this is a tool for developing and, and sustaining a dialogic pedagogy in the classroom and for building those oracy skills which are associated with dialogue. Um, and I sincerely hope that you enjoy using it, uh, that your class enjoys using it, and that, um, and that uh, if you do, um, you might like to write to me at, um, at, and just share your experiences. That would be absolutely great. The last thing I'll say is that obviously with COVID, um, we were thinking about, well, what, what happens with distance learning? What happens if, the, if our groups are not in the same room? As long as they have a means of contacting one another, for example, Teams or Seesaw or some other social media like that, they can con contact one another, they can decide on a group name, and as long as they use the same group name and the same pin, they can work remotely using TalkWall, um, sharing ideas, sharing what they want to share with the teacher, um, even though they may not be in the same room or building or indeed town. Um, so if you want to use it like that, I'd be very, very interested in your experiences. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that's in some way helpful to you um, and uh, enjoy all the other sessions that you might go to uh, in this particular set of conferences. Thanks for listening.